Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday in the 23rd week of Pentecost, year B. I trust that all is well. Our readings for today from the Old Testament, from the book of Sarah, chapter 28, verses 14 to 26. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 37 to 52. The appointed psalm, number 119, verses 49 to 72, or colic is for proper 25. Please join us in our opening hymn. The service continues from page 32 of your Book of Common Prayer with the open sentence, and then on to 35 and following. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up to God the sacrifice of praise that is a tribute of loose, which acknowledge his name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God. 
by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whose our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let the worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now let us approach God's throne of mercy with reference, seeking his forgiveness for even those things for which our own consciences are unable to face. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalm appointed, Psalm 119, verses 49 to 72. Psalm 119. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of all, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me, because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet towards your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cause of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise and give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you, and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. 
instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach, chapter 28, begin at verse 14. Slander has taken, shaken many and scattered them from nation to nation. It has destroyed strong cities and overturned the houses of the great. Slander has driven virtuous women from their homes and deprived them of the fruit of their toil. Those who pay heed to slander will not find rest. Nor will they settle down in peace. The blow of the whip raises wealth, but the blow of the tongue crushes the bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not as many as fallen because of the tongue. Happy is the one who is protected from it, who has not been exposed to its anger, who has not borne its yoke, and has not been bound with its feathers. For its yoke is a yoke of iron, and its feathers are feathers of bronze. Its debt is an evil debt, and Hades is preferable to it. It has no power over the godly. They will not be burned in its flames. Those who forsake the Lord will fall into its power. It will burn among them, and will not be put out. It will be sent out again, then like a lion, like a leopard, it will mangle them. As you, as you fence in your property with thorns, so make a door and a bolt for your mouth. As you lock up your silver and gold, so make balances and scales for your words. Take care not to err with your tongue and fall victim to one lying in wait. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you saw to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, beginning at verse 27. While he was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. So he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, 
clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for arms those things that are within, and see everything will be clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tighten mint and rue and herb of all kind, herbs of all kind, and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love to have the seats of honor in the synagogue and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over you without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe to you, lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourself do not lift a finger to ease them. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you built their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourself, and you hinder those, you hinder those, who are entering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Oh
Good morning again, brothers and sisters. I thank you very much for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you on this morning's gospel reading. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's gospel reading, uh, we encounter Jesus having another encounter himself with the religious authority. The ensuing exchange and it had many religious hypocrisies on the part of the Pharisees. Now he was invited to, to dine with, with the Pharisee, and Jesus accepted. He went in and took his seat at the table, but apparently before engaging in the ritual washing of his hands before dinner. The Pharisee, they were very proud of themselves for what they consider their scrupulous observance of the law. The fact, however, is that their obedience was not really to the law of Moses, but a twisted and concocted convenient uh, water, watering down of the, of the law of Moses to themselves, which they called the tradition of the elders. Their washing of hands before eating was a form of ritualistic cleansing as required by that tradition, the tradition of the elders. And Jesus was fully aware of this. He read the thoughts, thoughts of the host and, and rebuked him on account of his hypocrisy. He immediately stretched out, struck out at the core of the matter using vessels cups and dishes, as an analogy concerning the character, the character of the Pharisee. Our Lord reminded the Pharisees that emphasis should be paid on ensuring cleanliness of the inside of the cup rather than focusing on the outside. The Pharisees were known for their seemingly scrupulous, scrupulous outer appearance, but inwardly they were dishonest and wicked. He told them that the maker of the outside also made the inside, and that, in other words that they should be just as particular as the inner, of their inner being as their, and as they are of their appearance. Jesus, knowing the selfish nature of the Pharisees, told the host, that the giving of arms and, and the acts of death of his of being would aid cleansing their soul. The giving of arms and the, and the acts of, of, of easing the deaths would assist in cleansing their soul. We too are guilty of giving from our surpluses, but we should arrange to give to give regardless of our circumstances. Jesus then, then rebuked the Pharisees for the hypocrisy in tithing. They tithe mint and rue and other herbs from their gardens. But they were harsh and unjust to the very people who, who, worked, the, who worked the fields, neglecting 
to be just and exhibiting the love of God in their dealing with them. Jesus emphasized that the justice and love must accompany every act of tithing. He, he denounced the Pharisees for the excessive pride, the demand for the recognition and occupation of positions of prominence in the synagogue, and attracting as much attention as they could to themselves whenever they entered the synagogue. They were actually using the synagogue and the law to bring glory to themselves, thus claiming for themselves the glory which was due to God. Jesus compared the Pharisees as unmarked, unmarked graves or as walking defilements. Under the law of Moses, touching a grave rendered one unclean for seven days. The Pharisees in their outward appearance seem highly religious. But in fact, according to Jesus, they should be wearing labels to warn people to avoid them. Oh, to avoid them, because by touching them, will bring defilement because of their unclean nature. In other words, the Pharisees were full of uncleanliness and corruption and capable of infecting anyone who touched them. One of the lawyers who fully understood what Jesus, Jesus was saying claimed to be insulted by Jesus. But Jesus was quick to point out that they were guilty of placing, un placing undue burdens on the people which they themselves never carried. They pretended to honor the law of Moses and used the interpretation of the law to oppress the very people that they should serve. Jesus further, denounced, he further denounced the lawyers for their pretext in honoring the prophets by building tombs in their honor. But the prophets were murdered by the ancestors, by their ancestors, and the tombs serve as an endorsement of the murder, so that these lawyers too could be considered contributors to the murder of the prophets. In addition, at the same time, they were building these tombs, they were plotting to murder even other prophets, even our Lord Jesus Christ. And, they, and their murders continued even after the death of Christ. This God had predicted when he said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute. God said, therefore, he would hold this generation accountable for the murder of all these prophets, murdered since the time of Abel being the beginning at the time of Zachariah. And at to that time the Pharisees and to that time, even in that time, those who murder murdered the prophets would be held accountable. That generation will be held accountable. His final condemnation of the Pharisees was for their taking away taking away the important and salient knowledge of the people. They were withholding the true words of God and giving their twisted interpretation to achieve their own desire. What they, what they really did was to not give the people the true meaning of the word of God, but what they interpreted to be. And their interpretation was simply intended to suit their own devices. And so Jesus des described it. And this is how Jesus, Jesus described it. They took away the key knowledge and they did not, they took away the key knowledge from the people and they did not enter themselves. And not only that, they prevented others from entering. 
they hindered those who were willing to enter. And this was because of their false teaching and their false guidance. And they, they use this false teaching and, the, and their false guidance to, to guide the people of God away from the truth. And so my friends, the six woes which Jesus called out to the Pharisees in the synagogue at their time, at their time, may be akin to what takes place in our life today. In a general sense, they apply to us. The sham of the inner decadence, the tightening out of their surpluses, the desire to occupy places of prominence, the desire for recognition, the unnecessary burdening of others in matters of religion, the pretense of honoring the prophets, the concealing of the real meaning of the word of God, the hindering of people from truly honoring the true word of God. And these occur if we really consider our times carefully we can see sometimes that these are in fact occurring. But we must be guarded against being like the Pharisees and the lawyers, and that we must strive to bring the true word of God to the people and allow them to allow them to decide where they will stand. My friends, when the love of God fills our hearts, We'll be more concerned about more concerned about our inner cleanliness than our appearance, our outward appearance. And we'd give generously and be less concerned about recognition, being humble in our ways and being kind to others. To have a genuine appreciation for the word of God and to have a genuine appreciation to share this word of God with his people. My friends, we ought to be careful not to be like Pharisees, not to be like the Pharisees and the lawyers, so that we found so that we found acceptable to Christ when he comes. And may God help us in our effort to do this. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as, it, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. By way of intercessions, we continue to pray for God's abundant blessing on His people in this world. We are brave enough and bold enough to pray that the wars may cease and peace will increase. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide for the well-being of the, our church leaders, particularly the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. We pray for our Provincial Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. We pray for our Diocese and Bishop, the Right Reverend. Lord Berkeley, thanking God for his blessing him as he continues his work in this vineyard. Pray for the retired bishops, Calvin and Clay. Today, in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Good Shepherd's Church in Tanapuna, for the Venerable Archdeacon North, the Venerable Kenley Valdeo. We pray for the chaplaincies, the protective service, the state prisons. We pray for the hospitals, Trinidad and Tobago, Cadet Corps. In our own parish, we pray for our parish priests, the Reverend Father Professor Anders Maxwell. We pray for the Presbyter Pontifex Andre and for the Deacon Mark Haynes. We pray for all the church groups as they continue to serve. We bring the congregations in our parish before the Lord seeking to re-establish the congregation at Oropool. We refer the congregation of Lopino, at Lopino, Church of the Transfiguration, Maloney, St. Aidan's and St. St. Aidan's and St. Mary's. We refer those who are sick, invited them, encouraged them to invite the great physician into their lives. 
You prefer those who have passed that God will grant them his rest, remembering Canon Jemad Hazelwood and Reverend Father Carlisle Adams. May God grant them his rest. Returning to page 43, Suffrage A, we continue. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and a servant with knowledge and true godliness. Defend the Lord the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that innocent through us, your will, your will may be done. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gift of faith hope and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Returning to page 45. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may surpass its hours in perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so my dear brothers and sisters, we have come to an end of another Wednesday morning devotion. I trust that Someone will be edified. Let us now go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.